secret. So Tamara, tell us your dating dilemma. Yeah, I am a single mom. I was married and separated. We separated three years ago. Our divorce went final last year, and I just started dating again. I have two children, four and six, and I don't necessarily know how to navigate um, dating with children. Um, And, like, obviously I keep it, like, compartmentalized right now, Mm -hmm. but at what point – when you find someone that you're like, okay, this is a viable person, they, they check out, they're safe, they're all this, at what point do you bring the kids into the equation or when do you not? Yeah, it's really, 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 really good question. Where's dad? Dad is local. Um, yeah. Okay, is dad involved? Uh, yes, he now is involved the first two years we had a very contentious divorce um Mm. very high uh heavily in the courts and he did not have rights for two years and then um last fall they yeah how did he how did he lose his rights to his own kids what did he do um hmm. he we mutually agreed to report um, just CPS and he's in the military. So he self-reported to the military um, on sexual abuse against the children. Oh, wow. Okay. And, but now, now he is so, involved. So now he's involved. Um, and yeah. Um, okay. So he's more involved now um, when we were, cause it was such a long and horrible process. You know, obviously the kids were with me, for two and a half years and we kind of had time to transition and get normal and then he got are, are, are the kids normal with him now in terms of that's dad and they connect with him and or is it still really i mean after sexual abuse and that early and they're still young how normal is it um great question uh i would say they're doing the best they can. I think my daughter connects with dad and is totally unaffected. She's, they'll be, she'll be five soon. And my son more affected by dad. Um, overall, I'd say he's doing well. Um, he has been in therapy. Um, he was in therapy for two years and then he is not in therapy right now, but he wants to see a a counselor. So, so he still has, he has, he's a very thoughtful, almost seven-year-old. Um, and so I think there's just conversations that he always wants to have. Um, but I think overall, they're excited to see dad. I think that is in okay. a healthy context right now. So we have worked okay, through now, a lot. It sounds like it. It sounds like it. Obviously, you've done some amazing work to facilitate all that happening. Um, so let, let me tell you, I start with that, you know, one of the big problems, um, with, you know, a divorce with kids is, is that kids, um, it's a big, it's a big loss, right. On multiple yeah. levels. And so, you know, especially if they don't have the other parent, right. There's that vacuum. Mm-hmm. And so naturally kids, you know, they have a hunger for whoever they don't have. It's either mom or dad, but they have a hunger for one of those. I want one of those, right? Right. And yeah. and so sometimes when people start dating and there is that big vacuum, then the person comes in for a little while and the kid's going to develop an attachment, especially if they're really involved, and especially if they're treated well by this person. And then the relationship mm-hmm. doesn't go the distance and they've lost another one. And then they've lost another one. Right. And then they've lost another one. And so I think that, that that's a secondary question, okay? And we're, and we're going to get to it. But the primary question is what doesn't go away for these kids, okay? Now, here's what I mean by that. I want these kids to have some really, really, really good, close, involved, love them, male figures in their life, uncles, mm-hmm buddies of yours, grandparent, whoever, that 
mm-hmm. that aren't going to go away. You're not going to date them, right? But right. that literally aren't going to go away. And whoever comes and goes in the dating world, that's not going to be their primary look to for who they draw this, you know, stuff they're needing from having good, you know, male love in their lives. Okay. So that's what I would want you to concentrate on first is making sure that they have a few, few of those people. Okay. Now that'll mitigate against all the, all the other sides of the dating question. So here's my answer to this. Um, I think that um, if, especially, you know, kind of at that age, if you're dating and you're dating, meaning, you know, you go and you sort of like the way that I propose dating should be, you know, you're going out with a lot of different people and you're going to lunches and you're going to dinners and you're going to, you know, I don't know how you do all this in COVID, but whatever it is you do, um, mm-hmm. then that's kind of with these kids, that's kind of out there and it's kind of casual, right? And so if they ever were to come into the circle, it would still be in the early stages. So casual would be like, oh, you know, this is my friend, you know. Now, when mm-hmm. it gets a, a little goofier is when that friend shows up more than all the other friends. And really that friend now lives on our couch and that friend now <laughs> is. And so I would, I would really make a qualitative distinction between in your head making sure that somebody, whoever you're dating, doesn't enter into their heads in any sort of secondary category that they're more than friends. This is mom's squeeze, right? Right. And I would would avoid that happening until, you know, you're pretty sure it's going the distance. And that doesn't mean they can't relate to people you date and do stuff with them. You just don't want them losing again. That's basically mm-hmm. the deal. Does that help? Yep. That is that so helpful. Makes complete sense. Yeah. And you can find out if somebody's so, good with kids by, by, hey, we're all going to the park today with my buddy. Now, you, that, that, and, now while your kids are on the merry-go-round, don't be making out with your buddy in front of them. Because that's no. where they're going to go, oh, that's, <laughs> you gotta keep it funny, can I, right? What I, hear, <laughs> what I hear you say is that as long as it's casual, it's not as invasive to kids as in bringing around like if a guy, even if it's not in a romantic sense, but if he's like a best friend, all of a sudden he's becoming, he's taking up more space in their lives. So keeping it casual and that's fine because kids meet people all the time and they walk and in and out. They meet people all the whatever. time. And, and I don't mind, I don't mind friends deep and they're in in their lives because they're not going away you're not going to break up with a friend right right okay one one of the things i'm so grateful for so grateful for with my kids is that our our adult community you know the kids they grew up with so many, you know, just our friends over all the time, involved all the time, our, our small group, our, you know, our, the, the neighborhood we lived in. And just so many adults, like, present in their lives that love them and are committed to them, that there never was any risk that they were going to go away. And yeah. that's what you, that's the main thing you want for me. Okay? 100%. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, and good luck. Get my book, How to Get a Date Worth Keeping. Okay. Okay, because there's two dating problems. One is you're not getting enough dates, so therefore, how to get a date. Or you're getting them, and they suck. They're not worth keeping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you, long term. One, long term. One quick question. So you got you to you you, you, you do both. How do you, and you might address this in the book, growing up in, in church culture and not having this casual dating mindset, how do you go into, and I'm trying to, I have a therapist, he's trying to instruct me to just meet a ton of different people and yes, and just, but in my I head, love your therapist. Going, I love your therapist. it's Tell going me. against my inner, I love 
what I was trained to do is you look at a date and you're or like, did, look at marriage, or, but like, and I try to have mental boundaries and so, I try to, okay, so, this okay, is fun, look, but look, it's hard. Even, even the granddaddy of all that, Joshua Harris is the one that wrote the book. Yeah. He, you probably he, have run, yeah, run into he that. Did his. Uh-huh. No, he's good. That's, that's how I grew up. He, he's, he, well, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. he, he's he's coming out all, all these years later and said, you know, and God bless him for doing this. I really had so much respect for him when he did this. He so said, you know I. what? I was, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. Mm-hmm. It's great. I mean, he was young, too. He, so. <laughs> what's that? He was young when he wrote the book. So. Exactly. But I respect him for, for what he did. Totally. We had a long talk Thank about you. it. Um, really but nice it's guy. The, but it's re, but relearning. So, Okay, but, but keep that dating but keep that in your head. Married. Hold on, hold on. Keep that in your head. When you have that thing that, oh, I shouldn't be doing this thing. Wait a minute, the guy that taught me that said it's okay. Just try that, okay? Okay, but okay. But please, please expand, expand your pool past your church. You know, in all the research I did for this book, and I've seen so many, so many people, you know, end up getting in good relationships and getting married as a result of, of working that program. And they all come back and tell me, and it, 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 it like 99 points. I don't know what the right number is. Basically nobody really finds that person at church. Right. It just rarely happens. You find them by the other ways I talk about in the book, getting involved in life. Okay. Right. I appreciate okay, your call. You. God bless you. And I hope it goes well.